everyone, and welcome back to episode number 41 of Inside the Vault. I'm your host, Ryan Smith, uh, here on Carolina Panthers podcast. My latest guest today here on Inside the Vault, he is a writer for The Athletic, previously for the Charlotte Observer there in Charlotte. Follow him on Twitter, at Joseph Person. He was actually the inaugural guest here on Inside the Vault, so welcome him back for round number two. Joe Person, back on the pod. How are you doing, Joe? Good morning. I'm doing well. I feel like I should have a coffee mug or a t-shirt uh, commemorating that inauguration uh, uh, appearance. I'll work on that for sure. I'll get that right over to you. <laughs> um, let's just go through, um, let's just start with the Panthers offseason summary. I uh, Just a layup for you. I know you talk about this all the time. So give me your 5,000 foot view of the Panthers offseason summary in your eyes. Well, yeah, I mean, they did a lot of interesting things. I mean, they spent a ton of money at the guard position, which obviously we don't see a lot of teams do. Uh, a little it, That's becoming a little bit more popular, uh, you know, but, but still, uh, obviously, tackles is where you usually see these teams put a big outlay of cash. But the Panthers go get Robert Hunt. They get Damian Lewis. I mean, very – clearly a, a reaction to last year's catastrophe at the guard position where they cycled through about eight different guys at each spot due to injuries uh austin corbett and brady christensen kind of starting it but then everyone they plugged in there seemed to get hurt so and and that's important too and and i've written about this and i want to write a little more about it but bryce young you know, he, uh, we, we know he's not a, a big dude. He's five foot 10. No. And so, and, and I know Icky Aquanu had a bad year too, but a lot of the, the, the pocket stuff broke down right in the middle. And, and it was hard for Bryce, I think, to see his receivers. I think it was hard for his receivers to see him sometimes, uh, you know, kind of looking back through the, the mess that, that was the interior pocket and so the Panthers follow this, this path and this approach that we saw the Saints do about 15 years ago uh, yeah. when they brought in Jari Evans. And I'm going to forget the other guards they had, uh, eventually Andrus Pete. Uh, yeah. But the idea was you got a short quarterback. They had Drew Brees, obviously. Protect the middle, secure the middle, and you know, I, you know, you don't ignore the tackle spots, but but it worked for the Saints, and I I'm really interested to see how this how this works for the Panthers. Yeah, and so training camp coming up just around the corner, as we know, uh, very soon. Uh, let's preview camp for a little bit of time here. Um, I'll just let you kind of go wherever you want to go. Um, you can give me a position battles you're watching. Uh, just some general things about training camp that you want to see. Uh, give me your preview in Joe Person's eyes of training camp coming up. Well, yeah, a lot to look at. Uh, I, I'm kind of thinking, I was writing some preview stuff yesterday, and uh, two of their big time rookies, uh, draft picks, uh, were were out for for camp, and that was Leggett and Jonathan Brooks. Brooks, we expected to be out with the with the ACL recovery, and I I'm not sure he's going to be ready for the start of camp. Canales seemed to suggest that you know he might start on the pup list, uh, but Leggett was kind of a surprise. You know, he was out there, and then then it was like, oh, he's got some tightness, and you know, don't expect him to miss too much, and he ended up missing like the final three weeks of OTAs and mini camp. So. I mean, it's not alarming until it becomes a problem. And, sure. and so I think everyone in that building, especially the offensive staff, will breathe a sigh of relief if, you know, we're, we get to the end of August, beginning of September, and Xavier Leggett has taken 100% of the snaps. So that those are two guys I want to watch. I mean, I don't want to keep harping on the rookies, but I'm intrigued by Jatavion Sanders. Um I'm a big I'm here for it. Of, I'm, I'm a big fan of the tight end position. Uh kind of thought we would see some more of a breakthrough out of Tommy Tremble the last couple years. And Tremble's been solid, but Sanders has the look of being a really potentially difference maker in the passing game. 
yeah. Um, since I know I've only got you for um, a limited time, I'll just kind of go rapid fire through some of the yeah. position battles that I'm looking at, and maybe you can give your um, comment on that. So I'll start with defensive end. Panthers know that uh, most fans know this is probably the weakest position on the roster, at least in my opinion it is. You, some would say corner outside of J.C. Horn. That, that's fair. Um, but I would say defensive end, in my opinion, is the probably the one to definitely watch. So um, what are your thoughts there between Clowney? Can he produce like he did last year with Baltimore with the nine sacks um, or eight sacks? Um, Wanham might start uh, slow, like you said, uh, about training. He's another guy coming off an injury. And then you got guys like – Chasen, who is a bit of bust at this point, uh, and other guys that I most fans probably don't even know their names, to be quite honest with you. Yeah, it's a it's a lean group outside of Clowney, uh, for sure. And and you know, I frankly I think he's gonna be hard pressed to match his production from last season. I mean, he was on a really good Ravens team that had other pass rushers that offenses had to account for so i'm not saying he's gonna like fall off a cliff production wise but i don't know we'll see especially uh, uh, to, to your second part your second point there might, he may see a lot of chip blocks and double teams if dj wanham and clavon chase on uh aren't doing much on the on that side opposite him so yeah, they that position took a real beating, and I I don't think it's a stretch to to suggest that Dan Morgan's going to keep an eye out uh, on the waiver wire at that spot because, as you know, the Panthers have top waiver position for the until week four of the regular season. So yeah, uh, why not be active? You I mean you, you there's a guy you want, you're going to get him because no one's picking ahead of you. Yeah. yeah, I'm gonna turn my light on. I'm seeing I'm like real dark. Uh, no. Yeah, I you're good. No, I can hear you. You're good. Um, JC Horn and the cornerback position outside of him is the next one I'm looking at. Uh, obviously, we're hoping Horn stays healthy. I had um Panthers uh foreign defensive end for the Panthers, Al Wallace, on this podcast um a little bit ago uh, earlier in the spring. And that was his bold prediction for this year. Is he said JC Horn's gonna stay healthy for all 17 games. That that was his bold prediction. So um, what is your thoughts on the cornerback room outside of Horn? Uh, I want to see more of Dane Jackson. I mean, I think he's a really good player. I just, from what I heard in Buffalo, that sometimes when he was on the field too long, uh, for, for long stretches of, of we weeks at a time, I mean, uh, due to injuries, because he was really more their third guy and played some nickel and uh, a rotational corner and had someone up there telling me that when – he played for long stretches uh, in a row that his size would kind of get exposed a bit, uh, especially over the top. Not a big guy, but, you know, Dan Morgan famously pounded the table for him in Buffalo. So he thinks highly of him. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see what, uh, you know, Ajero Averro and, and Jonathan Cooley think of him. But uh, again, another position that, it would not surprise me to see them add to, excuse me, uh, you know, as camp rolls along. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned Jonathan Brooks, the running back position um, is my next one. And are we going to see Miles Sanders traded? I think that's what people want to know. Is someone like Dallas or somebody else in the AFC maybe? Is Miles Sanders going to be on this roster after Brooks is fully healthy? Because you got Chuby Hubbard, you got Brooks, as we mentioned. They brought in Rashad Penny, who – I don't think is going to make the roster personally. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, so what are your thoughts on the running back room? Uh, and will Sanders still be here this year? It's a tough contract to trade. Um, I mean, there's still a lot of meat left on that bone. So someone have to, would really have to have a, you know, kind of a big time uh, trade crush on Miles Sanders. Um, and, may, you know, if team gets gets a running back injured in camp, uh, and then some of those teams you mentioned that that might need a running back, maybe. I mean, I I don't know. It it certainly worth keeping an eye on. Um, I, I'm kind of with you on Rashad Penny. Uh, he feels like a guy that was signed to kind of take Jonathan Brooks's reps while Brooks continues to rehab that ACL. Um, yeah, Chuba Hubbard. I mean, I, he's got to be the leader in the room right now. I mean break breakout year last year 900 yards rushing but 
people really like Brooks. I mean, a healthy Brooks, he he and and he's kind of a three down back too. I mean, catch the ball out of the backfield. And I think that was a big part of this to give Bryce uh kind of a, a different type of weapon in the pass game. Yeah. The last one I was going to mention, which I think is a little underrated, is kicker. I, I think Eddie Pinheiro, Harrison Mevis. I mentioned this on a podcast with somebody else. I'm a Florida Gators fan. So Harrison Mevis is not a unfamiliar name to Florida Gator fans. Uh, he kicked a 62 yard field goal in Columbia to beat my Gators last year uh, to win. So I'm very familiar with Harrison Mevis and his leg. So what are your thoughts on the kicking battle going into training camp? Is it a, is is this going to be a media story that we're going to be talking about in a year from now that oh he it's a nice story but you know he, Eddie's still the guy or is there some real legit competition here? Yeah, I think it's legit. I mean, I he he had a fantastic spring. Uh, I think he. Uh, I'm trying to remember when we were out there the the four or five days that were open to the media. He and when he kicked, he was either twenty or twenty. I can't remember, he might have missed one, but he had a really fantastic showing. And then yeah. Panero shows up for OTAs, looked a little rusty, missed, I think he went two for four that day, none of which matters. I mean, right. the, the the pressure kicks start in August. Yep. Uh, and and they'll build, they'll build some some, you know, teams do this anyway, but but I remember. Oh, who was it? I guess when was the last competition? I'm sure it involved Joey Sly and somebody, but Sly and Graham Gano, maybe. Yeah, not Graham was already gone, but but point is, yeah. they'll build in some of these these periods uh, right in the middle of of a practice or at the end of practice, and then to to juice them up a little bit, they'll say, okay, this guy makes this. Uh, you guys don't have to run at the end of practice, and so there's a little pressure, but. Yeah, all, I guess what I'm trying to say is uh, Harris Amivas, as you suggested, the thicker kicker, has a big-time leg. Yeah, I just want to see him do it in games because he missed some you know, kicks in college, too. He, he missed a, a chippy at the end of the Auburn game where, where Missouri could have beat Auburn uh, on the road. So yep. uh, Panero is definitely more proven, but but it, it's a legit competition. Yeah. Um. You already mentioned um, Jadavian Sanders, the uh, tight end from Texas, our uh, rookie for the Panthers, and then obviously Tommy Tremble. I I'm very excited about that tight end room in general. Not a question. That was more just me geeking out. I'm excited for this tight end room, and, I and I'm hoping that we can get a Tremble-Sanders combined this year can be somewhat of a fraction of what Greg Olson was in his last year in Carolina, which wasn't you know prime Greg Olson, but that anything would be an improvement from what we've seen over the last four years. So I I'm excited, I, I think, for that tight end room for sure. Um, let's talk about three guys that are, are, well, two of them are not currently Panthers. One is, but, um, I think they're fascinating storylines and I think they're kind of underrated because we're not, we're, we don't talk about them enough. And that's what I try to do here on Inside the Vault to bring other information, uh, to the, to the listeners. Terrence Marshall Jr. This seems like it's his last chance. I, as listeners know, I was, I'm, I, I'm a Gator. So being an LSU fan of a guy is kind of weird for me but I, I enjoyed watching him play at college with jefferson with chase and he, and the nfl it seems like he has the body type he looks like he should be a really good receiver in the nfl but it just hasn't translated for whatever reason so do you see him making this roster it seems like canalis is giving him one last shot to kind of prove himself here he didn't just cast him away when he came to be head coach so kind of your thoughts on terrace and is he going to squeak in at that wide receiver five, maybe six? Are they going to keep five or six? Uh, what's your thoughts on Terrace and his uh, – can he finally break out this year? Yeah, I mean, you look at the numbers and he, he's he's got a shot. I mean, I think it would take somebody like an undrafted guy like Coker or somebody else, you know, passing him to, to keep him off the team, which may happen. I mean, I, right. I don't think – he's by – nowhere close to being a lock i'm not suggesting that but but he he's he's on the bubble entering camp uh, we saw him really one stretch of his career has been pretty productive and it was with steve wilkes and ben yes. mcadoo uh run, running things uh on mint street mcadoo running the offense and yep. and wilkes giving him a chance and and he took advantage of it and then last year he just 
You know, I don't you know whether it was scheme fit with Reich system initially or just that they had better receivers, but obviously he did not see the field much at all. So interesting guy to watch. I mean, I've, I've done several interviews with, with Terrace over the, over the years, he does not lack for confidence. So um, it'll be, it'll be, it'll be interesting to see if, if, if this is a year he, he kind of cracks through. Yeah. Uh, these last two names I'm going to co- combine since they're not on the Panthers currently. Um, will the Panthers sign uh, Stephon Gilmore? We've heard stories about that uh, throughout the offseason. It sounds like he's kind of waiting until training camp's over, maybe in August even, to try to pick somewhere to go. He's got some suitors, Panthers included. And then Brandon Ayuk, I know you talked about this on uh, another podcast earlier. Um, does it make sense for the Panthers to go down this road, uh, or is it just going to be way too much capital uh, for the Panthers to give up? Even if 49ers were to say, yep, we're, we'll, we'll shop him, uh, what do you want? So what are your thoughts there on those two guys? Out of those two guys, I would think Gilmore is more likely. Uh, you know, Obviously, they've already had conversations with him. He lives here, used to live uh, – you know, was, was neighbors with Fitter and Dan Morgan, and uh, you know, in Charlotte, lived in the same uh, community, so they know him. You're right. I mean, it does have the feeling of like maybe the Panthers want to, and we talked about this earlier. Maybe Ajero wants to see a little more of Dane Jackson when they're really, you know, when when stuff heats up uh, in two days. Well, not two days anymore, but in training. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> um, because it's hard to tell what you have in OTAs. I mean, it's, you're in shorts and whatever. So, and, and if Gilmore's not really, it's not like anyone, and, and he's coming off shoulder surgery too, by the way. So, I mean, I think there's a reason why teams weren't banging down his door right away. But, uh, if if they don't like what they're seeing out of that corner position, yeah, I, I think we could definitely see them swoop out and uh, swoop in and 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 sign Gilmore. Uh, Ayuk, I mean, maybe I, I ne- never say never. I mean, this is uh, this is a GM and Dan Morgan who uh, was right at the 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 right arm of of Scott Fitter, who was in on a, every deal. I just think, as you said, Ryan, it is a a lot to give up for in terms of draft capital and then also a lot to pay him. Mm-hmm. Uh, they got money going forward. I mean, you know, they, they didn't extend Deontay Johnson, uh, you know, Thielen's, you know, nearing the end of his contract. So it's not like they have a ton of money tied up at that position. Leg Leggett's on a rookie deal. So they could do it. Uh, you just wonder if it would be worth it and, and whether it would be a fit, uh, you know, this, this year and the first year, uh, uh, with Dave Canales running things. Yeah. I mean, you mentioned league Liget is kind of like the receiver to grow with Bryce young. Uh, Johnson is on a uh, one year deal. If they resign him, that would be great, but he, they, he, that's really, he may not be in towards the end of this career. So yeah, I mean, it would be nice to get a vet. If Johnson were to leave after this year, it would be nice to have another veteran presence. And say Thielen's gone too, it would be nice to have another veteran presence to grow with Leggett with some of the other guys that are he- younger guys that are here as well. So we'll see how that transpires. Um, it looks like Canales and Morgan are tempering expectations this year based on kind of some of the comments that they've made in media availability, which is kind of the opposite. I think a lot of Panther fans would say what happened with Fitterer last year and uh, now landing in Washington. Uh, not going to talk about Fitter, just saying uh, for the fans who may not know, he did land in Washington with a role there, uh, joins Marty Hurdy and some other former Panthers there. Um, what does success look like for the Panthers in 2024? I am a little bit more bullish than I think most people are, um, but that's only because our division is not very good, Joe. So I, I can make the argument that um, we could contend for the title this year, not necessarily because we have the talent to do so, but because our division is so bad. Yeah, I'm not that bullish, Ryan. I'm bearish. Um, I didn't. I don't think this team's close to to contending for a title. You had, you, you can call me in in early January and tell me what a fool I was if 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 you end up being right. But no, I mean I'm I'm not poking at you. I'm just I, I get it. It is a bad division. Um, I feel like it that this all. As, as you mentioned, you just as I sat in on these press conferences after 
Canales and Morgan were hired. It just felt like the whole thing was like, look, we we kind of did the tried to do the quick fix here the last couple of years, especially with, you know, Bridgewater and, and yeah. Baker and Dar. Like, we're not doing that. And we're gonna give you some time. And it's not something David Tepper's good at at doling out and and, and exhibiting patience, but I, I feel like that's that's the vibe I've got. That it's like we want to be competitive. Canales says things like we want to get the football right. We want to get the football right. Yeah. I mean, that doesn't sound like a guy that's feeling like, yeah, we're going to contend. But, you know, and, and I, I think to, to your question, what looks like success? What would be a successful season? couple things. They're way more competitive than they were last year. Uh, and I don't mean, yep. <laughs> wins and losses yeah but but just not you know, like some of these games where they didn't couldn't even sniff the end zone like that was bad football bad off in Tampa in the year yes <laughs> <laughs> um and then and so if that ends up being 5 6 7 wins great you know like i think that's you, you know something more than 2 uh, I think a lot of fans would be happy with six or seven wins. Uh, yeah, I mean, hopefully, hopefully five. Let's put that. In, I mean, five and a half is what Vegas is putting as the over under. Um, but bigger than all that is getting to the end of the year and saying Bryce is our guy. We yeah. have got our guy. No one's. You know, it is so obvious. And you get to the end of his second year and you're like, ah, I don't know. I like that's that's a problem. And and because they they've added pieces that we've talked about, uh, both in terms of playmakers and in terms of offensive linemen, um, they, they brought in the the famous quarterback whisperer in Dave Canales, who has overseen these resurgent quarterback stories in Seattle and Tampa. And, you know, you want to get to the end of the season if you're Dave Tepper, Dan Morgan, everyone in the building. And you want to be able to say, yep, we were right. He's our franchise quarterback. And so that, to me, outweighs and overshadows every other measuring stick for 2024. And I like how you combined questions there. I was going to talk about Bryce Young next, but you kind of uh, answered that for me. That's a good good, uh, good thinking there, Joe. Uh, last three, I'll get you out of here. Uh, it took us to about the 20 minute conversation before David Tepper's name uh, came up in conversation, which is uh, really good. But um, I'll just say regarding Tepper because I know you know it's a kind of a different thing he is the owner obviously he can do what he wants but do you feel like he your, your famous comment that kind of went viral uh as you probably are aware of do you really think he's in the background now as he says do you do you really think that is the case is that uh is the evidence pointing in that direction because that's one of the things I think is best uh to have the, a successful season for the Panthers is he needs to stay in the background like like he said Seems hard for me to believe that because that goes against every bone in his body. And yeah. it's, you know, listen, he made his his fortune by being front and center. I mean, it's just it's hard. And these guys, uh, you know, I don't. And, and he's certainly not the only owner that's ever, you know, wanted to get his hands on football. He spent a lot of money for this team, but but I hope so. I mean, yeah. for the sake of Panthers fans and the and this city and this region. Um, I will say this, kind of this kind of apples and oranges, but they, the Panthers definitely kept him in the background when the renovation, excuse me. Yeah. The, the stadium renovation topic came up and he was nowhere to be seen at any of the, the city council meetings, um, closed door meetings he had with, with council members, but, but yeah, I mean, he, he was very much took a back seat there publicly um yeah. so yeah i mean i don't think i mean it was it was cam newton who famously said that a tiger doesn't change his stripes exactly. what do you want me to, what do you want me to do not roar exactly. exactly uh which was a fantastic quote and and it frankly it's appropriate here i mean i i don't think if he can just back up a little bit uh yeah that'll I mean, go a long way give those guys a chance to breathe yeah last two for you um something we're not talking about enough going into training camp this season what what do you got for me wow that's a good question um i don't know let's 
I don't know. Um, maybe, maybe this just kind of pot like the secondary in general. Uh, okay. uh, here's a guy I don't think who's got who I, who I think is going to be a good player, Jordan Fuller. Oh, uh, I was going to say Chal Smith Wade, our rookie from Washington State. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. Right. So I, there are some pieces in that secondary, and I know, and, and you, that's a good one you mentioned because maybe he's the sleeper in camp that that comes up and takes Dane Jackson's job. But I didn't know much about Jordan Fuller when they signed him. Uh, as I, I I did a pretty lengthy interview with him this spring, he is really incredible person just i don't know he just kind of the one of these guys that i think is going to light up the locker room and be a, a a natural leader and he's i think he's got a chance to be pretty good i mean he had he had three picks last year he had three picks his rookie year so not crazy numbers but i think i think his familiarity with Ajero's system uh as well as uh Jonathan Cooley familiarity with the secondary coach I think that's going to be big so maybe we're sleeping a little bit Xavier Woods I think quietly had a very solid season last year so uh, may, maybe maybe we're sleeping a little bit on that that safety position well I'll get you out of here uh my question I've ended every podcast with um for the most part as I've gotten going here um I can't remember if I did this on the initial podcast with you so if I did uh I'll call this the updated uh what is your updated bold prediction for 2024 Panthers uh this year no you did not ask me that uh when whenever that first appearance was my bold prediction yeah I want to say something about tight ends but I do that every year and I'm most years I'm I'm off. Um, I'm not going to take Al Wallace's thunder and say J.C. Horn. My bold prediction for the Panthers is that they will have uh, they will have someone, and I don't know if it'll be Leggett or Brooks, but they will have a finalist for for offensive rookie of the year. I'm going to go ahead and say Brooks. That's my opinion. Uh, I think he. Now that's bold. That's bolder than I was willing to go. I, I didn't want to go that bold, but I, you took if, it there. And I like given your two uh, p- people, I would of those two, I would say Brooks. Um, yeah. Anyway. Well, um, is there anything else you want to plug Joe before I let you go uh, find Joe's work on the athletic uh, where he is a writer, does a good job. Um, Joe, anything else uh, you want to plug um, before I let you go? No, just. uh sign up for the athletic if you haven't already i'm sure we're going to have some training camp deal subscription deals and a ton of coverage uh starting really now but but uh beginning beginning monday the 22nd and then reporting day the 23rd and then from there on it is full-on hair on fire well uh as i said at the top my guest today has been joe person of the athletic um find his work there at the athletic subscribe he does great work joe thanks for coming on and we'll talk to you again down the road ryan thank you man and that'll wrap us up episode number 41 of inside the vault a carolina panthers podcast i'm your host ryan smith great review subscribe wherever you get your podcast we'll see you next time